Hello, I'm Lisa Smith of the YWCA Hanover, and this is She Rose, the podcast about empowered women who build community and in turn help others discover their own power. I've been interviewing women throughout the area who others view as their sheroes, women that they look up to for a variety of reasons, because of their accomplishments, because of the help they provide for other people, and often because they are so inspirational. This episode of She Rose features Amanda Bonnet, co-founder and executive director of Hanover Area Diversity Alliance, a local grassroots organization which grew from discussions held a number of years ago when racial tensions were on violent display in Charlottesville, Virginia. Amanda, as well as several other local residents, had gathered to talk about the horrors they saw witnessed on TV coming from Charlottesville. Several great ideas came from those discussions, which coalesced into the Hanover Area Diversity Alliance. Amanda and the five-member Diversity Alliance board hit the ground running, holding the area's first diversity festival in 2018. going, and... Here we are today. We have the Juneteenth Jubilee in June. We have the Diversity Festival. We have free English classes. You know, we're still doing some speaker events. And we've come so far since then. Um, It's just amazing. I asked Amanda to talk about some of the things that she's most proud of, of Hanover Area Diversity Alliance some of the things that she feels were the most critical that they've accomplished over the years? That's a really difficult question. Yeah. We, we've, we've done a lot of things, but I, it really is between the education and the advocacy, and they really go hand in hand. Mm-hmm. So trying to trying to educate people about other cultures or other people who who may not be like them you know is definitely important and it's also probably the most difficult part of what we do Mm -hmm. because in a lot of cases you know you're trying to change a mindset that has been around for years and you're you're working against a fear because a lot of a lot of the people who are holding these prejudices are actually fearful and it's that's the most difficult part to get through to make them understand that you don't need to be afraid of other people or you know other people who are not like you and they're going to say i'm not afraid But underneath it all, that's really what what is going on when Mm -hmm. you dig down deep. Um, As far as being the most proud of anything, it would probably be um, our advocacy work. You know, working with other groups, trying to help people stand up against the discrimination um and and the bias that is going on out there you know there there are several things going on right now in you know in our society in the schools um just in general there's there's a lot of um attitudes and things going on that have really kind of come out from under the rocks you know, as um, certain added, as certain figures and and everything have been showing their their views. You know, it seems like a lot of other people seem they they think they're safe. You know, coming out and and showing these attitudes, and I'm kind of glad that really all this has come out from under the surface. Because if it, if it stays under the surface, you can't heal it. It's hard to fight and, something you don't see. 
Right. And it, you know, it's hiding there and it's, it's like a wound, you know, if you have a wound and you know, it's, it's festering underneath. If you don't open that wound and let that poison out, that wound isn't going to heal. It's just going to eat away from the inside. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you need to, you need to let that, that out as nasty as it is so that you can work against that and you can advocate for people that need it, um, help them get services that they need, help them um, stand up for themselves when someone does show a hateful attitude toward them, um, help them show and share their stories. I asked Amanda what the biggest goal was she had yet for the Hanover Area Diversity Alliance. This is what she said. Our biggest goal would be to change some hearts and change some hearts and minds mm -hmm. in our community to eradicate the bias, the discrimination that is here. And a lot of what we see isn't even necessarily with the companies. There are some companies that still have that attitude, but we're seeing it less and less. And we've had some big companies that, you know, they're like, wow, you know, look what you guys are doing. Or they're supportive one way or another. Um, that makes a difference. But there's there's this undercurrent of people who have been here and they've lived their whole lives here and they, they don't want change. But change is coming no matter what. Mm -hmm. And I guess eventually they're going to have to accept that change. And it would be nice if we could help transform their hearts and work with them um, to get them to change. But I don't think all of that's going to happen. Um, I think a lot of them are going to go down the hard way. But if we could change some of the attitudes in the community so we don't have some of the incidents that we've seen, so we don't um, have some of the nastiness, you know, that would that would be the ultimate uh, right. thing for us. We, I would like to see us go out of business. That's a lofty goal. Diversity Alliance go out of business mm -hmm. because we have nothing left to do. Everyone is getting along. Everyone is doing well. Amanda shared with me that she felt at an early age that this was a calling for her. Even as young as 18, she felt that the groundwork was being laid for her to do this type of work. I'll let her explain it to you in her words. When I was 18, I had a college roommate whose father was killed in the civil rights movement. And two years later, I had another roommate who had come over on the Marielle boat lift. And I heard their stories. Um, it really touched me. It's part of what's made me who I am. And part of why I do the work that I do. And um, I, so I think at 18, I probably would have told myself to follow my heart. Because my heart was being pulled in that direction, even at that time. And I really do think this is a calling. But I was busy with my career. I was busy doing other things. And so now I, I kind of wish I had started this sooner. Mm -hmm. So I would say follow that calling. Mm -hmm. The 18-year-old Amanda knew then which direction. That's amazing. Uh, that groundwork was being laid right then. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I am a person of faith. And 
one of the things I, I can see as I look back is there are several different situations that have built me into who I am and for myself I believe that I was being prepared to do what I do mm -hmm. because I do see this as a calling yeah and and that makes sense that makes sense because everything that we've done prior usually is prepping us for something we're going to do later so it kind of builds on itself like that Mm -hmm. um, who was your hero when you were a child Amanda did you have a hero somebody you looked up to my hero would have been my nanny Brim okay um, I she was um, a woman that she's not a blood relative but she treated me just like one of her kids and I was with them a lot um especially when i was very young in my formative time and she was someone who taught us that everyone got the same it didn't matter your color it didn't matter your intellectual ability it didn't matter about anything you were a human and you're a person you got the same as everyone else so when the white milkman or the black egg man came to the door they both got a cup of coffee in the winter or a drink of water in the summer um, when the boy down the street who had an intellectual disability came to play with everyone else he was allowed in to play and he had the same rules as everyone else. And it's just the way we were raised. Mm -hmm. In when you know, when I was very young. And so it was she I don't I don't know how to say it. She is someone who taught me that from the beginning. And I really feel like she played one of the biggest roles in my life of teaching me right from wrong and teaching me that everyone matters. When not involved in work with the Hanover Area Diversity Alliance, Amanda works as the public information officer for the York County Area Agency on Aging. She is recently remarried and has a blended family of five children, ranging from the teenage years to adults. She also serves on the advisory council for the Pennsylvania Human Relations Commission. In the meantime, Hanover Area Diversity Alliance keeps her quite busy. In fact, there's new issues on the horizon every day. And there you have it, Amanda Bonet professional, mother, public information officer, and community advocate for a more open atmosphere in the greater Hanover area, one in which everyone matters, because when it comes right down to it, everyone does matter. We hope you enjoyed this episode of She Rose. Be sure to tell your friends and neighbors about our podcast on Empowered Women and let them know where they can catch it. We will update our listings with new episodes every few weeks. If you would like to suggest someone to be highlighted as a Shiro, please see the link at our website, ywcahanover.org. And remember, any of us can be a Shiro. There is no limit to what we as women can accomplish. This is Lisa Smith of Shiro's signing off for YWCA Hanover.